imagine that you are in the city of Medina. The year is 11 after Hijra, and our Prophet ﷺ has just passed away, and the event of Saqifa has just occurred. Now the Shia of Imam Ali alayhi salam are being forced to give bay'ah to the new ruler. I want to know, what would you do? Would you do taqiyah and give bay'ah and help the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam in secret? Or would you speak out and risk your life and maybe even the lives of your friends and family, what would you do? I think it's a quite hard question because um, I'm no one to definitely say that I'm definitely going to do taqiyya and stand up with Ahlul Bayt and what's right. I mean, I don't know if I'm that good enough to definitely be definite that I'm definitely going to do the right thing and do taqiyya but hopefully if I like I guess inshallah if I like did and I was there I think I should like taqiyya is the right thing to stand up and do the right thing say the right thing yeah mm -hmm. yeah it is um, a difficult thing to try and picture what you would do um, I mean it's either doing taqiyya or either standing against the will of Ahlul Bayt. So, I mean, definitely, we want to be on the safe side, we want to be on the right side, which is definitely Ahlul Bayt, Imam Ali, and the right thing. But will I do that? I can't say, yeah, I'm 100% sure I'll do that because Imam Sahib Zaman is here now, but like, he's not here because of our deeds. So, yeah. Yes, yes, you're right. How many millions of Shias go to Karbala for Arba'een every year and yet our Imam, all he needs is 313. Such a tiny number. I mean, when you ask, everyone says, yeah, I'll do this, I'll do that. But when it comes to reality, it's not like that, so. Yes, it's so important to be sincere with our intentions, you know, what we say and what we do. I want you now to picture that you are standing outside the house of Fatima to Sahra alayhi salam. This blessed house where revelation came down from the heavens. This house where our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi would greet his family with such love and warmth and affection. I want you to imagine that you see the enemy coming towards the house and you see and hear that the threat is made and Fatima to Sahra alayhi salam refuses to let them inside her house. I want you to imagine now that the door has been pushed and you hear Fatima to Sahra alayhi salam screaming from behind the door and you see that the house has now been set on fire. How would you feel seeing such a terrible thing? And how do you think you would react? Um, I think if the question was to say, what would you have done if you were there? I was planning to say something like, I would stand behind the door definitely and not see Fatou to Zahra's ribs broken not see her lose Mahsin. I mean, the hardest thing in the world is ever to imagine your mom in a hard situation. Um, but the fact that the question is, I'm outside and I'm viewing what's happening. I mean, I, I don't know what I would, definitely I would cry maybe nowadays, like when you see some, like we, we can't see something like that nowadays, but when you see something horrific, like the bombs that happen and all that, um, Usually you'd cry, maybe, I, I mean, is the question giving me a chance to do something to stop it or is like everything's already happened? 
Yes, it gives you a chance to do something, yes. I mean, as a lady, I'll, even though I am a lady, like, I'll still try to do my best to just like run towards her, help her do something that maybe shows less pain, um, maybe prevents something from happening. Like, if I was able to, I would definitely stand behind the door. But the fact that the house is already burnt down and everything, I'll just try to do anything that can help her to prevent her ribs from breaking and all that. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, it's interesting how, you know, you say that if this was our mother that was happening, that this happened to, you know, we would stop at nothing to protect her. And surely Fatima to Sahra alayhi salam, she is, she is worth the sacrifice of all of our mothers. And of course, she is the mother of Al Hassan wal Hussein, and her two daughters Zainab and Um Kulfum alayhi salam. I want you to picture now that the attack is over, and now you are walking towards the house of Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam and you see her body lying on the ground. She is unconscious and her children are there and they're scared and they're crying. They're trying to wake their mother up. What would you do to help make that situation easier? Um, I mean, besides losing your mother, which is the most precious thing you have in the whole entire world, I can't say to you something like, I'll stop them from crying, or because this is Fatima Zahra they have lost, it's not just any mother. Um, this might sound a bit like not something someone would do nowadays if a mother dies, but I mean, I can't make the situation any easier. I think I would sit and cry with them, to be honest. Because um, losing someone like Fatim Tizara is not that easy, especially in such a horrific way with losing their brother as well. Um, I mean, they're not n normal children as well. They're holy children. So something like, oh, don't cry or it's fine. I mean, it's not fine. It's Fatim to Zahra, so I don't know if I can do, my attendants will do anything like making the situation any easier. Has Fatim to Zahra passed away here or is it she's just in pain? She's just in mm. Yeah, maybe I'll do something to make her feel better. So I don't know, maybe I don't know what I can do, but something that will make her pain less. But in terms of them crying over their mom, if she's unconscious, maybe like I could take them out of the room. Yeah, but other than that, I, I mean, it's their mother they're losing. It's not easy. Yes, of course. Um, it's hard to imagine the pain that. Fatima Sahra alayhi salam faced when she was attacked. In nowadays when we break a bone we can go to hospital and it's painful nowadays. But Lady Fatima alayhi salam she didn't have that option. And I can understand what you say when you know you feel that you wouldn't be able to help that situation, that you would want to sit and cry with those children because if we sit in the majalis and we cry and slap our cheeks just hearing the story of Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam how would it be if we were actually there with her witnessing this finally sister I would like you to imagine that you are in Medina and you are walking beside Imam Mahdi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten his reappearance on the earth. 
I want you to imagine that you're walking beside him and you say to him, Yabna Rasulullah, where are we going? And he says to you, I'm taking you to visit my grandmother Fatima alayhi salam. Now no one knows where the grave of Our Lady is. Due to the oppression that she faced, she wanted nobody to know where she was buried. I want you to imagine that you are now standing in front of that blessed grave. And if you could say anything to her, what would you say? To be honest, um, I've always thought about holding on to Lady Fatima Salam's window. How we go for Imam Hussein for Arba'in, how packed it is. Um, I think each and every Shia has built a grave and a shrine for Fatima Zahra Salam in their heart where we can sit and imagine it for hours and hours. Um, I mean, first, like going back to the beginning of your question, me walking with Sahib Zaman in first place is something I can't even imagine. I can't say to myself, or oh, like casually, I'm walking with Sahib Zaman. I mean, if Sahib Zaman was, I mean, because of our deeds, because of us, Sahib Zaman is still not out. Maybe if we were better, he could have been out time ago and we have put her a shrine already now. But the fact that we're taking so long is causing, is leading to Fatima Zahra's grave and shrine not being built yet. What I would say to her, I mean, I, I think I would just cry that it took us so long to find out what her grave is and I think I'll show her sorrow for what happened to Allah Abdullah as well, her son. Um, I mean, Fatim Dizara didn't wasn't just oppressed in her life, she was oppressed even after her death by what happened to Sayyidah Zainab, by what happened to Al Hussein, Al Hassan, each and every member of Ahlul Bayt. Um, I think I would mainly ask her to accept me as a servant because anything we do for Fatim to Zahra السلام, is definitely accepted and looked at but I want to assure that it's looked at. I want to maintain, like I want to be 100% sure that she's got her eyes on me. She's there, she's seen what I'm doing for her. As well as I'll ask, definitely ask for forgiveness, not just for myself, for the whole Shia community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the amazing thing about Fatima to Sahra alayhi salam, that even though she faced the worst of tragedies, she was so concerned for her children, especially Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, and the most precious words that we could say to her is Abad Wallah Ya Zahra, Manin Hussaina. That whatever happens, no matter what happens, we will never forget Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam for the sake of Sayyidatul Nisa Al Alameen. I thank you so much, my dear sister, for being with me on Imagine today. Thank you for having me. And um, for giving your honest and sincere views and opinions. I pray that Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam is pleased with you and your efforts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all firm and steadfast on the path of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. And may he hasten the reappearance of our master, Sahib al-Zaman. May he make us worthy of being his Shia. And may he bring goodness and justice to this world after evil and injustice has filled it. <laughs>
اين بقيت الله الا كراز خدا خدا كند كه بياي خدا نور غیب خدا کنم خدا کنم 